Good morning, my friends on Facebook. I hope your Monday is off to a good start. I, I mostly wanted to talk to you really um, in case your Monday isn't. I wanted to do some truth telling and storytelling this morning. So anybody that pops on here and wants to join me in conversation, please do. This is absolutely 100% not scripted. I don't even have an agenda. Look, I have a pad of paper in front of me and it's empty. I just wanted to come on here, obviously, in my most rare form. I, uh, For those of you that know me or have seen my videos, you know that I do a lot of synthetic application, is what we'll call it, because I love it and I enjoy it. Um, you know, I do synthetic hair. I do my synthetic eyelash extensions because I enjoy them. I truly do. And, you know, it's when I first started out doing what I do and wanting to, to serve and give my heart and give uh, helpful truths and empowerment coaching and things like that, I had a platform that was called Our True Beauty. That's when I first started. It was called Our True Beauty. And the platform was based on us loving. Hi, Julie Tennant. I love you, girl. Our True Beauty, that platform was based on loving ourselves in our most raw form, whether physically or um, internally. And I would talk a lot about loving ourselves, you know, as women, even um, even aside from the nails, the hair, the skincare and all of that. And that takes, that takes a lot, right, to be able to do that. That's why a, a lot of us women, we wear cover up and we, we want, our hair is so important to us. And um, and so I wanted to jump, use that as a jumping off point today. Again, I don't have a script. I don't have an agenda. So if anybody wants to pipe in with your feelings about uh, what I'm talking about, please feel free to do that. But I, um, <clears throat> we were driving home from Columbus yesterday and, you know, I wear eyelash extensions and they were starting to, you know, come off. So I just started pulling and um, I, I I pulled them, I have, I didn't pull them off, but I, they all came off and I woke up this morning and um, I looked in the mirror and I went, well, Marla, you don't see yourself like this all the time because I usually have something synthetic on, whether it's my hair or, you know, makeup, a little bit of makeup and my eyelash extensions. But I thought, you know what? I was delighted this morning. Um, I was, I was, I had a delight, a, feel, a morning of de delight and a morning of um, trepidation. And I'll explain that as well. But I, I did ultimately get up out of bed and I looked in the mirror and I thought, you know what? I, I am happy where I am in my life, where I can look in the mirror and be okay with my most raw form. I mean, I, I love the, you know, the, the accessorizing and things like that, but there was a time in my life and I wonder if you all have been there or maybe you're there right now where you just, um, you don't, maybe you don't love who you are on the inside or what you're feeling on the inside or even what you see in the mirror. Because we as women, we beat ourselves up for so many things, the scale, the mirror, the magnifying mirror, so many things. And it, it, life is so tr filled with true joy when we can um, just love ourselves in our most raw form, whether that's emotion or physically. And I wanted to come on and just be, just be, just be real and have conversations with anybody that wanted to have a conversation right now because that's a really, really hard thing to do. And I, I often feel like if I'm going to come on here with my synthetic accessories and tell you truths that I learned along the way in the empowerment journey, I wanted to come on in my most raw form and just um, send you love and send you truth and just chat with you. Um, so today's topic really is identity. Who are we? Who are we really? And sometimes we feel um, a sense of rejection because we're, we're scared that the world isn't going to love us for just who we are. And you know why? Because sometimes when we step aside from the world and the uh, the the the, uh, the desire to please the world and to serve the world well. And to not give the world maybe all that we're feeling, we put on an identity to the world of something that we're really not. Maybe it's something that we're really not feeling that day. And I'm just here to give you love and just speak a little bit of truth in your heart if you needed it today. That it's okay to just embrace yourself as who you are and the rawness, trueness of who you are, um, what you're feeling that day. 
Maybe you're feeling things based on the ripple effect of the people around you. Maybe you're feeling um, a sense of rejection because of the ripple effect of the world around you because of what we cause for ourselves. And sometimes what we cause for ourselves is not being okay with who we are in the mirror or who we are in the deepest, darkest, truest feelings in our heart in the middle of the night. So I just, again, my, my I guess if I had it, I don't have an agenda, but the, the truth statement headline for right now in this moment is just our identity. Who are we? How do we feel? What, what limited beliefs are we telling ourselves that just we carry with us throughout the day? I want to tell you guys a quick story. Hey guys, everybody that's watching. Hi Morgan, I love you so much. Hi Pam. Shelly, good to see you guys. Um, I want to tell you guys a quick story. So um, we just got home last night from being out of town and um, tired, just tired. You know what I did this weekend? I ate well. <laughs> I, and when I say I ate well, I ate, girl, I did not hold back. I usually eat well most days. I really do. I do try. I drink all my water. I, um, I, I try to make good choices, but I made some good choices. Let me tell you something. I ate what I wanted. We were on a trip. You know, I started the trip doing a cubby hole promo with a candy bar. Had so much fun eating that. That Fifth Avenue bar was delicious. We were camping, so I ate, you know, um, junk food. I ate chips. I ate a sandwich with two pieces of white bread and Miracle Whip. And then we went out for sushi and we went out for dinner and I had pasta and I had wine. And on the way home yesterday, girl, there was no stopping me. I had to find, I'm telling you, it was, I know it was hormones because I, I couldn't get, I could not get a Sunday from Dairy Queen out of my head. I said, David, it like where I, we have to go. So I found uh, an See, okay, I get to, okay, I'm, I, we found a Dairy Queen. I had to look it up. Where's Dairy Queen near me? We went, we got a Dairy Queen. We're pulling the travel trailer. The teenagers are in the car. God bless them. I love them. I love my teenagers, but I, mama needed a moment, okay? Mama bought mama and mama bought daddy uh, a peanut buster parfait and a sundae. And I'm like, could you do, could you please put extra chocolate and some extra pecans and, oh, and put some bananas because you got to have fruit. I mean, I'm trying to take care of myself. An extra, an extra, I see it's a miracle whip. Extra cool whip. Please just put it, load it up, load it up. And I went out to the trailer and to the car. And I said, David, I need you to come with me. And I am telling you teenagers, I love you, but I need a moment. And I don't want, I want to have a moment where I don't serve anybody. Please don't ask me any questions. Someone take care of the dog. And they didn't want anything. Otherwise, I was, otherwise I would have bought them something. But I, David and I went and sat under a tree behind Dairy Queen in the parking lot on a stoop. And I said, David, I need to just enjoy this by myself without anybody else, without serving anybody. And girl, I ate that thing with, I ordered a large. I ate it. I ate it with conviction, there was nothing left. Oh no, no, I had a big hunk of chocolate and pecans at the bottom. And I said, David, I have never run out of ice cream at Dairy Queen because I always think they give you too much. He poured the rest of his ice cream into my bowl so that I could mix it up. I ate it. Hmm. So what I'm trying to tell you is I enjoyed it, girl. I did. Okay, but I've realized, you know how we can step on the scale and weigh ourselves? I think what the next invention that's going to be amazing is they should provide an inflammation meter because I woke up this morning. Okay, so I woke up this morning. My mind was inflamed. My body was inflamed. I was just inflamed. Every, this is why I, I know why I eat, try to eat well because my body reminds me, but we have to do it. We have to eat the bad stuff because we're just going to crave it. And, um, and so I ate, I ate the good stuff. Look, I even have my little sushi pen here. Oh my gosh, it's reminding me. A girl, and I ate, the people we were with, I ate all the sushi. And they were looking at me like, because um, I said, I'm still hungry. And I, I wanted to, I was eating my daughter's leftovers. I ate, I ate, and I enjoyed it. But my body is fully inflamed this morning. So there we go. There's a little jumping off point for a topic. My body was inflamed. My mind was inflamed. My mind was going on overtime. I love this platform that I have wanting to serve women, to do comedy, to do empowerment, to do the cubbyhole chats, to do these things, to serve my teenagers well, to love my husband, to love my dog, to love my friends, to love my family. 
And oh my gosh, my head was spinning. Hormones do not help that enemy spirit in us that just wants to um, um, just tell us that we're not doing it well. The enemy is alive and well in our lives. Just like the love of Jesus, it is alive and well. And that is the thing that is going to tell us we're not doing it well. It's going to tell us, why did you eat that? You are crazy. Why would you do that to yourself? You know what it's going to do to you. You are failing. You just did it. And I'm here to tell you, it's not a failure. It's goodness. It's serving our body with what we need to treat ourselves. And we treat ourselves um, in so many different ways. But when we get those thoughts in our mind that we're not good enough, we're not serving well enough, look at this person over here. They're doing this. Look at this person over here. They're doing that. This mom actually packs really awesome lunches. This mom is homeschooling really, really well during this quarantine. And I, my kids are making macaroni necklaces every day because I'm not a school girl. And so I just want Amy, hi, Paralee, hi, Janet, hi, Cheryl, hello, good morning, Melissa, Aunt Lois, Cindy, um, Michelle, I love you guys. I just want to know that it, um, I want you to know, okay, so I woke up, okay, we, we need to serve ourselves and serve ourselves well, but it's okay when we have those thoughts creep in us that we're not enough and we're not doing it well enough and we didn't do it good enough for ourselves. Stop. Look at yourself in the mirror in your most raw form of who you are and know that you are loved. You are loved. You, um, this feeling, it will, it will pass. You know, they come and they go. And when we're feeling like we're not enough, I just want you to know, to give yourself permission to know that you are enough already. So I want to just tell you this story. So uh, continuing with the story, I woke up, I'm feeling all these things. My body is inflamed. I don't have an inflammation meter to determine, but I, my body does know. I couldn't move. David forgot something at the office. He came home and I was just getting out of bed. I was getting out of bed like a 90 year old. He's like, are you okay? I'm like, I know myself. I, I, I am going to drink water. I'm going to do well, but I am like inflamed, but my mind was inflamed too. Do you ever have those days? And so today I'm going to eat well and I'm going to make better choices and I can switch that around. I have that control to be able to do that. But when our mind is inflamed, what do we do there? We need to know the truth. So what happened was I was feeling snarly. I was feeling at myself. And I um, I do my, my study every mo every morning. And my girlfriends, Tara, Olette, and Joy Lee um, out of Barn 45, and I'm going to post the link here, okay? I don't get a chance to watch them every morning because I'm doing my own my own study. And I, I stumbled to the Keurig. I, I put in a pod. I My eyes were barely open because they're probably swollen, girl. Wine will do that to you, so will sugar. But I enjoyed it. So I, I got a, a cup of coffee. It was, it was pouring, and I was scrolling through Facebook. My mind was all over the place. I hit... I hit um, brew on the Keurig and I hit play on their um, Barn 45 message this morning. And right when I clicked play, um, Joy was talking about a story about Jesus who was um, in a boat and she was talking about how they were, he was on a lake. And it was the coolest moment for me because we were driving home last night and David said to me, he said, um, isn't it cool that in Michigan we're so blessed to have so many beautiful lakes? We're surrounded by lakes. And this is the way God works in our life, guys, lives, guys. If we just pay attention, he gives us little sprinkles. Literally, he just said, David just said that to me last night. Right when I clicked play, Joy was talking about a story where Jesus was um, going across the lake and he felt rejection on the other side of the lake. And that when he went back to the other side of the lake, there were people there that were praise, singing his praises and loved him. And such a good jumping off point. I don't want to go into all that the beautifulness of the, what Joy and Tara talked about. I'm going to put a link right here. And if you just want to fast forward to the 33 minute mark, that's where I popped in. And from there on, they served me and served me well with this snarly, overthinking, overprocessed mind was thinking about myself and my maybe my lack. But I know better. I know how to close that gap between adversity and peace a lot sooner now. But I went there. My mind went there of the not enoughness and the identity. And am I doing it right? Maybe I'm not doing it right. And and this thing and that thing. Is, and, and we're trying to raise teenagers. And I'm trying to understand teenagers. And I don't always understand teenagers. And I, I don't always know if the things that I jump out and do on my platforms. You know, I know I feel called to do them. But am I doing them right? Am I doing them well? Overthinking. Have you been there? And the horm hormones, the hormones, the hormones with a capital T, they will, they will, they will rob you of your peace and your thoughts will rob you of your peace. So jump in there when I put this link in here of Barn 45. I couldn't say it better. 
I could not say it better than the way Joy and Tara explained it this morning. So if you need that encouragement, I'm not going to try to paraphrase it. I'm going to put it there for you to go. And I bet you it serves you well because it's what we talk about as women. It's what I'm constantly talking to women about. Okay, I want to share with you. I love that I, I don't usually do my videos from here. I often do them from the cubby hole. But I love that this picture right here, Tara, Tara, who's in the video, the who I'm talking about. Tara bought this picture for me a long time ago. Um, it was for my office. And isn't it beautiful? It's a picture of Jesus just holding that little girl. And it is no coincidence that this picture right here in my office, do you guys see this picture? This picture is going to be on the cover of my book one day, or at least in one of the chapters. And I just want to say this to you because it's kind of where I'm going, I guess, with this, um, this message. This picture is a picture of me. It's a silhouette that David snapped a picture. We were on a lake and I'm kissing one of my little girls. And I, I love that I really don't know which one it is. And um, I love this picture because I'm in my most authentic form, my baseball hat, my tired, weepy um, uh, ponytail. And I love that um, I'm giving my little girl a kiss. And I am li literally giving one of my little girls a kiss. But what this is about right now in this moment, I just switched to an agenda because now I have one. Okay, I'm going to talk straight about this. That little girl inside of us, that little girl version of us, has either experienced joy in her life or she's experienced trauma. Um, she's experienced things, and you'll hear Tara talk about this too. Tara and I talk a lot empowerment stuff together and we both are passionate about that little girl version of ourselves. I don't care if the little girl version of ourselves is from yesterday who may have been wounded. Maybe she was wounded and troubled as a young girl. We carry that with us. And then when we wake up someday in our 30s, 40s, and 50s, feeling inflamed, our mind is inflamed. Our mind can be inflamed because of the thoughts that we carry from that little girl. And that's why I'm so passionate about healing those versions inside of us. Because those versions can tell us lies and false truths, limited beliefs. And I love that I'm kissing that little girl because that's what I encourage all of us as women to do. Is to grab that version of us, inside of us, that might be contributing to thoughts that aren't serving us well. Because there's people, places, and things in our life that we affect one another. And we, it might cause us to believe a truth of rejection or not enoughness or lack because we didn't heal the fear, guilt, shame that we carry with us. And that's what causes us to look in the mirror without our eyelash extensions or, or our hair or maybe we don't wear any of that ever and we just, regardless of where we, where we wear those things, we're looking at maybe synthetic thoughts. I talk about my synthetic hair, my nails, all those things, but sometimes we are carrying synthetic thoughts. They're fake. And I love that in that picture, i got to show you one more little detail, two more little details. See this picture? Okay, so um, in this picture, there's a sunburst coming out of my, my throat. I also want to point out that this right here is something a friend of mine bought me on a bracelet, and it fell off the bracelet, but I glued it on. It says um, she believed she could, so she did. But that sunburst coming out of my throat... Um, is so I, I couldn't have made that up. I didn't put that in there. It was in the picture. God called me years ago to speak to women, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because I was terrified. Because I didn't like to speak or read out loud when I was a little girl in the classroom. Because I would stutter. Because I I, I had the you know I had the unibrow and the braces and the um, the acne and the tallest girl and I was the new girl and the kids te kids teased me like kids do. But I believed what they told me about my identity as the truth. So when I would speak, I would I would stutter over my words. And if I, you know, you, with kids, you stut, kids stutters over their words. Kids are going to laugh. And the more they laugh, the more I stuttered and vice versa. So I believed in my heart I couldn't speak. And when, God, or when David snapped that picture, I looked at it just this last year. When I knew it was going to be the cover of my book or a, a, a chapter, I, do, I looked closely and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a sunburst coming out of my throat. And that's God. Only God can, those are, um, it's God's providence that he can take the supernatural and put them in the natural things in our life and have us see it years later. There was a sunburst in my throat to speak to women and he wanted me to have that light, his light, come out of my throat and my voice. And I could only do that 
with the love that he gives me. And that's why I love that it's right next to a picture, didn't plan it, of Jesus giving that little girl a hug. And you know the other thing I love about this picture, and I'll put this picture in the comments, I love that the little girl, one of my real little girls, but metaphorically, my little girl, my little girl that needed to be healed and loved and cared for, the little girl literally in that picture is wearing a life preserver. And I love that. I couldn't love that anymore. Because there's so many truths um, inside of us, in the little girl that we carry with us, that we look at in the mirror, um, that is literally our life preserver of learning and healing the truth. And when we learn and heal that truth, it can save our life, our thought life, our beliefs about ourselves, and, and the love that Jesus gives us um, is also our life preserver. This warm hug that I talked to so many about. But anyway, I just wanted to come on here and um, share some love and some truth with you. Go through and watch that video. Um, I'll, I'll, you could, I, I, I can't wait to go back and watch their video and see what they were talking about prior to the 33 minute mark. Um, but I just wanted to pop on here while I'm having my coffee. You know, I do coffee chats from the cubby hole, and I'm always chatting with other people that um, bring so much truth and joy and talent and skill. They reflect all that onto my life, and I love sharing them with you from the cubby hole. But today I'm just from my office in my most rare form, coming to you with some truth and some love. That if you're waking up this morning with inflamed an inflamed body or an inflamed inflamed thoughts. Um, just know that you are loved. And, you know, sometimes, like I know Tara was talking about this in their video, that it's a ripple effect. And I love I love this thought and I love sharing it with women all the time is that what we carry on the inside of us can then become a ripple effect into the relationships in our lives. If your relationships with people in your lives aren't going well, it might be them, it might be you, it might be both of you because we all carry so much in our hearts that it's then hard to communicate with other people. And then we can feel a sense of rejection and a sense of not enoughness. And really it all stems from how we feel about ourselves. Do we feel like we're enough? Do we feel, um, you know, all the things that I talked about just prior in this video. So um, we can we can judge ourselves based on the world. We can judge ourselves on so many things. And a lot of it is on who we believe we are truly when everything is stripped away. Do we feel like we are enough? And I'm just here to tell you, we are. Whether our hair is falling out or we feel better with our eyelashes, or we feel better with the fancy clothes, we're enough right away, right out of the gate. So if you needed this today, great. I hope that it served you well. I just want to send you all of the love in the world and to tell you, you are just, um, you are just a shining beacon. But the great thing is you don't have to go and serve anybody today. You don't have to serve anybody well today. You can, we can just sit alone in our own inflamedness and in our own thoughts and just sit and serve yourself well by just thinking through of the beauty of who you really are. If there's an enemy out there telling you that you're not enough, you are enough. You know, I'm just looking up and I'm seeing this and I want to share this with you. Hang on a minute. I just looked up at my um, cork board and I have some scripture written here and I love it. It's Romans 8, 28 and it says, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. So matter, no matter what your purpose is today, no matter what you've been through in your life, it, there's a purpose for it. And if you are beating yourself up over for things that have happened in your life, things that people have done to you in your life, those things do happen for a reason, but they, it often makes us stronger. And there is a purpose for it. That when we can take that and it goes into what might be our broken heart and it comes out in a recycled way. You don't have to serve other people, but maybe it's just to serve yourself better so that you can give yourself a break and um, serve yourself better. Love yourself for who you were uh, put on this earth to be, which is happy, joy-filled, peaceful. You deserve that.
You deserve that. I love you, ladies. I'm going to go because I'm going to go heat up my coffee. But I just wanted to share what was on my heart this morning. I love you all. And I'm sending you all, um, yeah, lots of love. And I will, until next time, I will just talk to you all later. Bye. Have a beautiful day.